Yeah, I, I saw. Uh, I was on your page all last night. <laughs> for sure. Trying to get prepared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just opened our first flagship store on uh, Crenshaw Boulevard and Lamar Park. I went to Crenshaw High, so it was like a huge thing for me um, to open up a store in that community where I grew up at. Um, we're planning our first fully loaded music, arts, and culture festival, shooting for the summer of 2025. Um, so that's super big. And just continue to grow the brand and you know build on that. I always wanted to be a juvenile probation officer. But I fell in love with teaching through basketball. So I was the head basketball coach for my freshman and sophomore team at Crenshaw. Um, and then I was assistant coach for JV and varsity. So I fell in love with teaching um, kids through that. And then I was a fifth grade teacher for five years. Um, I resigned literally in June 2020, right after the pandemic. And I was just like, man, I know a lot of people. I get a lot of support. I'm a funny dude. You know, I, I can go anywhere by myself. My name is not, you know, ran through the mud. I don't fuck people over. Um, and I always wanted to brand myself. So I literally took my tax money and was like, man, I'm going to start a cannabis company. I learned that through my older homies, uncles. They made a lot of money, you know, doing what they did. But then they also was able to buy tow yards or group homes or um, laundry mats, things like car washes. So you make enough money here and you invest it in something that can be long lasting. And I took the same approach. I started with a cannabis company. I branded it as if we were legal um, in the beginning. And then we were able to get a third party um, license. So we were able to do a delivery service and then from that, my business partner, who's been my best friend since diapers, he was like, man, like we should put Loaded on a t-shirt. And I'm like, man, I don't want to fucking sell clothes. <laughs> like, I wear this shit. I don't want to sell it. Um, and he was like, no, nah, bro, you don't have to do it that way. It'll sell itself if you market it the right way. Three years later, we have a storefront. I'm in a critical part of my life right now. I'm still trying to figure out how to be a better partner a better man, a better um, dad, a better businessman. So everything is strategic right now, even though it doesn't happen that way. Um, my intentions are pure. They're always good. Uh, I don't fuck over people. Um, if I can connect two people in our industry and they can you know, take it to another level, I'm all for that. I don't want nothing from it. Because when I started this, a lot of people was gatekeeping shit. And you have a brand, so you know, like, you have to do the trial and error. You have to start with the bullshit tees and work your way up to the more exclusive tees. Um, but if, if it's not about my kids, my relationship, my business, then I'm probably not going to be there. I don't think I would um, be where I am if it wasn't for my kids. Simply because they look at me as a superhero. And no matter what, I have to show up every single day. And um, without them, I'd probably be doing some things I know I shouldn't be doing. Um, they put a lot of things into perspective. I have multiple opportunities to do illegal things and, you know, put my hand in certain business ventures that I know I shouldn't be in. But knowing that I can jeopardize my future, my freedom, and um, my relationship with them, it definitely keeps me on the right path. Like, I'd rather struggle and do it the correct way. Um, then have it all and do it the wrong way. And that's simply because I have two kids and they are my every, like people say it all the time, but like my kids are really my best friends. Like I wouldn't trade this for nothing in the world. 
they've watched me build the brand up. I mean, like, from nothing to something. Chase knows how to screen print our tags on our T-shirts. I take them to the factory with me. Um, I'm showing them the ins and outs. They've sat in business meetings with me. Um, they've watched me do demolition to our storefront. Um, Chase actually produced his own T-shirt under our brand a month ago, um, which was like really huge for me and him. Um, just because his creative mind and his creative juices are now flowing. And I tell Kelly, um, who's my business partner, I tell him all the time, like, bro, we we might not even be the ones who advance our brand. It might be my kids because they now have a jump start. They are seven and four, but they're watching what it takes to produce 300 shirts. They... They're seeing me do the cut and sew. They're doing the tags. They're um, in these meetings. They, they're understanding what the verbiage is, how to talk. Um, and even outside of that, just, again, showing up every single day, um, bathing them, helping them brush their teeth, tie their shoes, like ride a bike, all of that. You know, those are different capes that, I, I wear as a father, but um, they definitely tell me like that. You, you're Spider-Man, Chase is Batman, but you're like Captain America, Dad. Like I'm just like, damn, that shit is dope. I have an older brother. We're 11 months apart, so we're fucking twins, really. Um, my birthday is August 4th. His is August 15th. So we'll be the same age for 11 days. We have the same mom and dad. Um, but growing up, he was like that father figure for me because he grew up faster than I did. And I always needed that comfort. I always needed that um, that father figure that, of course, I had coaches and godfathers, but having someone every day, we got to take the bus to school every day. He's waiting for me after practice. We should go on shopping together. We're still in sidekicks together. Like, everything he did, I thought was correct. So he had a huge influence on my life growing up. Um, again, I, of course, I had coaches and, and father figures, but um, – my brother became a father at 19, and maybe two or three Father Days ago, he literally just texted me like, Happy Father Day, bro. Like, you make me want to be a better father to my kids. And I was like, damn, like, you started this way before I did. And the fact that you can see how I am with my kids that makes you want to become a better man, a better father. I was just like, damn, that that's dope as fuck to me. My great aunt adopted me and my three siblings so we wouldn't go to different um, foster homes. And just seeing her work her ass off to provide for us to make sure that we never went without. Um, like my house was the house that everybody came to every holiday. Um, People would come eat. My my mom would cook for the entire neighborhood. Um, there's not a car that passed by our street that didn't stop and say hi to my mom. And that just showed me that, you know, um, community is really important. When she passed away, her funeral was like, you. it was not even standing room. So um, she instilled certain qualities in me that I... One, took heed to, but I also uphold now, and I want to instill in my kids as well. Like my, Don't get me wrong. My mom and dad were definitely in the picture. I know who they are, but they were big drug dealers back in the 80s, and you know they were in and out of jail. So um, for me and my siblings, it just made sense for us to be raised by my great aunt. And um, again, like I never felt like a victim. If anything, I used that to my advantage. Um, I was able to go to school for almost free. I have a degree in criminal justice. And um, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a juvenile probation officer. 
just to help the kids that, you know, grew up like me. Um, so I, I never felt victim. I always tried to use my mishaps or my shortcomings as motivation to, you know, always do more. My senior year in college, I had five jobs, literally. I tutored. I did construction on the weekends. I worked at McDonald's overnight. I was coaching basketball, and I was doing um, an online tutor. So it was just like I was a hustler since the beginning of, like, middle school. I sold chips, juice, Rice Krispies, Airheads, like, I was the guy that was like, you buy, you spend two dollars, you getting something for free, um, and I just translated that to being a real businessman. Um, so I, I always knew what I wanted out of life. Um, I'm a firm believer of whatever is meant for me is at the end of the the, the race. Um, that outcome is already there. You just have to do the necessary things to get to that outcome. Growing up, I used to say, like, dang, I probably would have been better off if my dad was around, but I probably could have been worse um, if he was around. If he continued to say, oh, I'm going to show up, or oh, I'm going to do this. Like, I'd rather you not say any of that and just don't try to have a relationship with me until I'm ready. Um, but me being a father now, I 1,000% understand, like, I I try to make sure I call my kids um, if I'm not with them every day, but life happens, and I, I fucking feel bad if I don't talk to my kids on a daily basis, um, and that's something I want to work on, but being a parent, um, being a businessman... Life happens every day, so I don't put my kids on a back burner to anything, but there's times where it's like, damn, I, it's too late to call now, right? So I completely understand, but um, I say it all the time. I had the perfect example of what not to be when I became a father. When I graduated college, I had four tickets. My grandma, my great aunt, my godfather, and I invited my dad. The first three came. And my dad didn't show up. So literally after my graduation, I called him. I was like, dude, I forgive you for everything. Like at that point, I knew like I was stepping into, you know, being a grown man and understanding that whatever he did, I have to forgive him in order for me to become a better person, a better man, a better father when I did have kids. And it was a weight lifted off of my shoulders because I was holding it in so much. And him not showing up to my graduation was like the, that was the last straw for me. We have a cool relationship now, but I don't think it would have happened if I didn't call him that day and forgive him. None of that could be possible without being able to address the things I went through growing up or the things I might, might have seen growing up in the inner city. Um, I've literally seen like eight or nine of my childhood friends get murdered. And even though people may deem it as normal, that shit is not normal at all. That's not supposed to be happening um, in elementary school or in middle school. Um, so, you know, I want to become a better man, a better businessman, a better partner, a better uncle, a better brother, um, a better friend, and I don't think anything, any of that would would be possible if I didn't, you know, go to therapy and, you know, address certain things. You know, everybody has a purpose in the world, um, and I think I found mine, and that's to, you know, continuously inspire the, the next generation, but also, like you said, you know, not too much put too much pressure on myself um, to get these things done because at times I do feel like a perfectionist and if it's not done the way that I saw it, then I'll probably like scratch the idea or, you know, but surrounding myself with 
um, pure-minded people definitely helps me, you know, stay level-headed. I never like to get too high. I never like to get too low. Um, and I think that's that's why we've been so consistent now. Um, and that, again, that's just a testament to the support system that I have around me. The next generation is going to keep us going. It's going to keep us young. It's going to help us understand what's coming next. And if you don't capture them, then it's going to be difficult for you to advance anything that you're doing. We see it in pro sports right now. If you're not it within your first three or four years, they're going to find the next 19-year-old. Same with any industry. Rap. If you're not, if you 18 and now you're 22 and you're not hot no more, they're going to find the next 19, 20-year-old to figure it out. Um, so for me, it's always going to be how do I reach back and help those that might have the same interests as me, might might have been through what I've been through. Um, I damn near, I'm a therapy, uh, a therapist to some youth, just me being able to relate to them. No, nah, I went through that. Like, you don't, trust me, don't do that. They might do it, but then they'll come back and be like, damn, like, you were, you were right. And, um, like, again, if we don't, if we don't help the youth, then, what are we actually here for? Give myself a little grace and um, understand that life is a continuous battle with the flesh versus the spirit, right? So, um, again, my, my intentions, my soul, my spirit is always pure, but... I might think with my flesh and do some way out shit that I didn't even plan on doing. Um, but again, that's just through the daily conversations with myself, with God, and, you know, um, I don't think I'd probably would have went to therapy, therapy if I didn't forgive myself first. It's cliche, but, you know, treat others how you want to be treated. Um, look a man in his eyes. And I, I learned this from my mom. Like, look a man in his eyes, shake his hand. Um, be respectful to everyone that you encounter because you never know what that person may be going through or um, you never know how that person can assist you. Um, I don't do it often. Or not all the time, but, you know, there's times where, and I, I'm sure everybody goes through it, where you're having a bad day, but you might want to brush people off just because your day is, you know, shitty or whatever. But you still have to find the the fine line in between being an asshole or, you know, being that person that people can look towards for um, inspiration or, you know, just to put a smile on their face. Yeah, just... Figure out what you want out of life and um, figure out what's important to you and go get that shit no matter what. Don't let nothing stop you from reaching your goals. It may take longer than others, but if you are focused on what the outcome is, that's set for you already and you do the necessary things every day, eventually you'll get there. Honestly, this feels like a therapy session. And I fucking love it. I love it because um, being able to express the ups, the downs, the highlights, uh, the lowlights, the everyday battle of getting up, working, um, figuring it out, fucking up, 
getting back to the drawing board, being able to express that in words, um, it feels good because we are continuously, and when I say we, it's like us as a whole. Everybody is trying to figure out how they're going to make their next dollar or the next trip, but it's rare that we can step back and look at the grand scheme of things and actually give yourself some forgiveness, give yourself some grace, um, big up yourself and, you know, know that you're doing something positive.